I'm Michelle Lee, this is Elijah Strad, and this is Michelle Shan. And our research project was focused on generalizing the top polynomial for hypergraph. And we were mentored by Dr. Lucas Resman. So let's start off with a few basic background definitions. A graph is an ordered pair denoted as v, comma, e, where v is a set of vertices and e is a set of edges. An isthmus, which is like here, is an edge that must always appear in a spanning tree. A loop is an edge that never appears in a spanning tree, where a spanning tree, a graph G, is a maximal cycle. So when you perform a deletion, you pretty much take out the edge, and this is an example of that, and it's denoted as G delete E, and when you perform a contraction, you pretty much pull two vertices together and take out the edge, this is an example of that, and it's denoted as G contract E. So a minor of a graph G is any graph obtained by a sequence of deletions and contractions, and a terminal minor is a minor that contains only loops and distances. So if we look at the terminal minor, um, we can construct the top polynomials by counting the number of links and loops. We raise x to the number of links in each terminal minor and y to the number of loops in each terminal minor. So if we look at the terminal minor on the very left, we see that there are 30 links. So the term would be x to the third, and we sum over all the terminal minors. So um, for activities, if we have a spanning tree uh, and we there's an edge inside the spanning tree, we call it internally active. If when we remove it from the spanning tree, it's the least element of the link set. That is the set of all edges whose addition to this new graph would cause it to become connected again. So uh, you can see <coughs> edge one is the uh, least element of its link set, so it, it's internally active, whereas edges four and five are not. So we'll raise x to the first power since there's only um, one internally active edge. So an edge is externally active if, out, if it's outside of a spanning tree, and when you add it into the uh, spanning tree, it is the least element of the cycle it creates. So here we see that uh, edge two is uh, the least, it's not the least element of the cycle it creates, whereas edge three is, so edge three is externally active, and then raise y to the first power for one external activity. When we sum over all spanning trees, raising x to the power, of, uh, x to the number of internal activity, active edges, and y to the power of the number of externally active edges, we actually get the top polygon. So activities was predefined, but the problem with activities is that the term created by terminal minors by counting the number of links and loops and the term created by activities does not directly correlate. So we came up with a new way to do activities and call them abeyances. And instead of finding if edge E is the minimal value in the link set, we're checking to see if the element is the maximal value in the link set. So doing this, um, we can also construct a top polynomial um, by uh, use, counting the number of internal abeyances and external abeyances and summing over all the spanning trees. So the main advantage of using abeyances is we prove there's a direct bijection between terminal minors and abeyances. So the term created by counting the links and loops is equivalent to the term created by the abeyances. For example, for this terminal minor, we see that there's two links. So its, uh, it's term would be x squared. If we also count the abeyances, we see that there are two internally abeyance edges and zero externally abeyance edges, which also creates the term x squared and their equivalent. So from here we have, uh, so here we have three theorems related to deletion, contraction, and abeyance equivalence. So the first one is the aforementioned one, where that there exists a bijection between abeyances and terminal minors, and the second one is that there exists a bijection between deletion and contraction sequences and terminal minors from the top polynomial de definitions. The third one here is uh, pulled from the previous two, and it states that there exists a bijection between deletion, contraction sequences and abeyances. So now that we've defined abeyances, we can use this to apply. Um, it to graphs by partites and eventually hypergraphs. So we assign each graph G its bipartite by dual graph by labeling all the vertexes on the left and all the edges on the right and connecting them if they're connected on graph G. So uh, using this, we can come, we came up with the idea of fractional appearances. So we say uh, edge E is going to be uh, K over N of A. If in gamma, uh, K of its n incidences are abeyance edges. So if we now, uh, for each e, raise x to the uh, power power of its uh, fractional abeyance, uh, and just make it zero for non-integer uh, values, and y to the power of the fractional external abeyances, then we get the top, uh, and some of our spanning trees in gamma, we get the top polynomial from g. So here's a working example of the spanning tree in gamma. We see that uh, edge four is um, fully abeyant, whereas edges one and three are only one half abeyant. 
Um, so since this is uh, an operation in gamma, and a gamma can represent hypergraphs, <coughs> this is a really great way for us to generalize the definition of the top volume of two hypergraphs. So using the definition of fractional hypergraphs of a bipartite, would you also come up with the hypergraph top polynomial using fractional advances from its bipartite? So what have, we have, what have we accomplished? We have established a new condition for activities based on maximality. We've also proved projections between advances and expanding trees. And we've also defined the idea of fractional advances, and we have used those to um, define the top polynomial for hypergraphs. So we can explore in the future, that does the top hypergraph formula also correspond to the number of colorings? And how can we use the Tuck's minimum definition of activities to reclaim the one-to-one -one correspondence between activities and its different trees? So we would like to thank uh, Dr. Lucas Rosnack, the ASM, 2019 HSMC MathWorks, for their support, MathWorks research coordinators, Danica Wool, Jenny Liu, and Eric Wu for the feedback, and the audience for their kind attention. Thank you.